All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name's Mitch Smiley. I'm from California. California, man. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people uh, message me telling me to holler at you, man, because you've been in the system for quite a while. Uh, how much time did you do and, and uh, what led you to the old uh, CDC? I did 38 years, six months and a few days. Uh, I had a 15 Damn. life term. You said 30 or 38? 38. Jesus. <laughs> Man, yeah. and you've been out, you said, what, two years and two months? Yeah, two years, two months, about 26 months. Have you gotten into the rhythm of things yet, my friend? I see you've got a massive yeah. little business going on with the T-shirt, screen print, yeah. all that stuff. We're yeah. going to talk about that at the end. Uh, but how was it, man, adapting to coming out of 38 <laughs> years? That was cool. You know, I pro to uh... – they pro I went to transitional housing, side of 15 life term. So if you're a lifer, they want you to pro to transitional housing. Yeah. So I went to uh transitional housing in Los Angeles, the South Central. It's kind of a trip. Uh they had like 24 guys in the house. And about out of 24 guys, let's say there's like four or five white dudes. And we're the only white guys in the neighborhood, you know. The Are South they kind Central of uh are you know, they kind of politicking like they would in prison nah, in this house? Nah. Okay. Yeah, we lived, uh, the, the pad we were at was like two, three blocks from where the Rodney King riot started. So, oh, damn. And, uh, yeah, it was cool, though, man. I asked this dude, hey, what's it like out here, you know, in the ghetto, right? And he's like, look, it's just like prison. If you want some, they'll give you some. <laughs> it's like, you know, they'll give you more than you can handle. I know that's right. Uh, fuck around, they won't fuck with you, so. Yeah, yeah, I understand no, that. Um, cool. Well, let me ask you this, man. Uh, shit, 38 years. I mean, that yeah. you were in the system, I don't know I the exact date. I got busted in April 79. So you've seen probably a huge shift in the whole prison system, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Well, this is going to be interesting to me, man, because I love individuals that have seen a lot, and it looks like you got a lot of wisdom, man. And uh all right, so go ahead and tell me, what led you to damn penitentiary for 38 years of your life? Well, I was uh, 17, and uh, I was in a bar, neighborhood bar, you know, biker bar with a couple of my my crime partners. They were both 24, and uh, yeah, I was in the 70s, late 79, right? So uh, we're at the bar drinking, you know, I was a big kid, had a little facial hair so I could get in the bar. And uh, then it carved me or any of that shit. And like I said, it was a biker bar. I mean, they had a sign behind the, the bar, you know, it said, give your knives to the bartender. I mean, they, that was a deal, you know. And, really? Uh, Did people partner, do that? Now, nah, my crime partner asked her, hey, you want my knife? And she goes, no, nah, I trust you. <laughs> Damn. So, uh, this dude come in. He was in a motorcycle club and uh, started talking shit. He cracked my... Uh, Crime partner in the face with a beer pitcher. So I got up, jumped on him, socked him in the face a few times. My crime partner got up. They started fighting, stumbled out onto the sidewalk. And uh, old boy was on top of my crime partner, beating him up, you know. So I started stomping on him, kicking him, stomping him. And uh, somebody stabbed him during the yeah. course of that fight, and uh, he died. Damn. All three of us... Uh, got busted and uh you know they come at you with deals right yeah it's like manslaughter manslaughter and then second degree the guy they thought did it they offered him a second degree and uh the deal was a package deal everybody had to take the deal or no or if you wanted to take the deal and the other two didn't you had to get on the stand and say what uh your part in the crime was yeah you know my lawyer said look man they're either gonna they know you didn't stab the dude you're either going to go to prison or you're going to be a rat. So, you know, I went to prison. <laughs> 38 years later, man. Yeah. So what was in, what was a charge? Y'all y'all all pled to uh, murder? Second two? degree murder. No, we went to jury trial. Because obviously the guy they offered second degree to, he didn't want to take the deal. My deal would have been six years, you know. But uh, his would have been 15 to life. So. Unbelievable. We trial. Well, there's a that's a first uh, life lesson for anybody that uh, might be doing dirt with friends, man. If one person calls some crazy bodily injuries, you're probably going to fall with them. Uh, chances yeah. are. 
Well, you know, he, I, my my official thing is aiding and abetting by vicarious liability, second degree murder. Damn. So, if That's someone crazy, commits man. a crime and you're with them, you're fucking like I was involved with a fight, but uh, you know, in the eyes of the court, you're just as guilty as them. Yeah. Legally, you know. Yeah. So, well, tell me, man. Uh, was it? I know how it is over there in California now with the whole segregation and people don't really cross certain lines. I mean, was it like that when you first went in or was it a little oh, yeah. more unstructured? Yeah. yeah, it was like that. Yeah. Uh, it's always been like that. Like I did some time in youth authority before this happened. It was like that there, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah you, it was, real. it was, I mean, as far as uh daily life in prison, it's segregated, man. I mean, you hang with your own crew, right? Amongst your race. That's it. Okay. And what what, what was jumping off in uh around that time? Was there any kind was it the was there still was there Southsiders, Northerners and stuff like that like it is now? Yeah, I mean, but not it wasn't like it is now. I mean dudes had Sereno tattoos, you know, all that stuff, Northerners and uh but I mean it wasn't as as the way it is now. I mean white dudes are pretty strong back then. Uh you know, towards the middle and end of my term, you know, they, they would lock you up. They would give guys indeterminate shoot terms. So they put them in the hole indefinitely yeah. just for being first. They started with prison gang members and then, uh, you know, like the, the brand and then uh, the Nazi lowrider guys kind of grew, blew up. They locked all them guys up. And then uh, like a, a thing was like checking paperwork, right? If they caught a white dude checking another uh, white dude's paperwork, they would lock him up as being uh, predatory behavior. Mm -hmm. So once you got rid of all the prison gangs, any white dude that had predatory behavior, they would lock up. So you had all the strong white dudes, well, not all of them, but a majority of them, locked up in the shoe. Because they built Pelican Bay shoe, they built Corcoran shoe, Tehachapi shoe. <clears throat> they hold thousands of people, in, you know, in the hole. And uh, yeah. they got to keep it full, you know. So they oh, filled oh, their man. places up with guys they deemed as predators because there were no more prison gangs to lock up. So the white population got really thin on the on the main line. You know, as a, and as the PC, S&Y yards grew, the, you know, the white population and the general population, it, it, it shrank. I remember being in... Uh, in Lancaster, the prison in Lancaster, that was level four. There were ten white dudes in a building of two hundred people. So Damn. Yeah, that's crazy, real, man. Yeah. I I mean, uh the beginning though, it wasn't like that. Yeah. You know. Uh well let me ask this, man, before you know, just get into get into something. Uh if you if you were to pick one group that was probably more savage than anyone throughout your 38 years, what group do you think that would have been, man, ethnicity-wise? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say because, like, you know, when I first went to the pen, I mean, all groups were pretty savage. I mean, white dudes killed a lot of dudes in there. Uh, so, did, so did the Hispanics, you know, the Mexicans, you know. It just kind of uh, varies. I mean, in when I first went to the pen, it was like, uh, you know, they would shoot you for fighting. I mean, Folsom they had many 14s. That was it. And San Quentin they had shotguns and many 14s. So the thing was, if you were fighting in San Quentin, they'd shoot you with a shotgun or the mini 14. If you know, if you had a yeah. knife, they'd shoot you in many 14. So like, if you had a problem with somebody, uh, you know, now they call it no hands policy, no fighting. Right. But back then, the reason you didn't fight was because you got shot for fighting. Guys would fight if they could do it somewhere where they wouldn't get shot. But uh, so the equivalent of a shot, a fight was like uh, a, dude has a, a dude has a problem with somebody that's not real serious. Like it's just an issue where normally you'd fight. They go out and stab a dude three or four times. That's the equivalent of a fight. Now, if a dude was. Uh, uh, fucking up like drugs, owed money to somebody, wasn't paying. He's getting whacked. You know, yeah. is a whack him. Or if dudes disrespecting somebody outright, uh, he's getting stabbed. You know, 
Yeah. The thing is, uh, man, you're living in a prison with, you know, three, four thousand dudes. There's there ain't nowhere to run. So if I got an issue with you and I go, uh, you know, punch you in the face, break your jaw, whatever, I still got to live around you. So then I got to watch my back, right? Yeah. But dudes would just stab people. It was uh, it was pretty savage. Yeah. And from what I hear, man, uh, it was. Uh, and it still is to an extent, but. Oh, yeah. If you were, go ahead, tell me what what prisons have you seen? Can you even, if you can remember, as I'm sure you've seen a lot of them since yeah. 38 years. I was in San Quentin, the early '80s. Uh, I did some life for programs in Vacaville back in the '80s. I was at Tracy for a long time, uh, Donovan for a long time, the prison down in San Diego. I was in Corcoran for a few years. Uh, I was in Soledad when it was level two. It's the low level. I got Valley Fever over there, and uh, yeah, it's... Which one would you say probably sticks out in your mind more than others when it came to violence throughout your bid? Uh, I'd have to say uh, San Quentin. You know, I was in New Folsom for a hot minute, but Folsom and San Quentin were both pretty savage. Yeah. I mean, they were killing dudes all the time. Uh, I was never in Old Folsom. I was in San Quentin, but... uh. It was pretty bad. It was bad. I remember. Yeah, I, hear, I, hear, huh? I hear. I've heard a lot about these whole uh, fights where people get gunned down by these many, uh, by the shotguns or whatever. Many fourteens. Look. Yeah. That's crazy, man. I've also heard that. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but there has been articles and stuff like this. Have you seen anything along the lines of? Uh, I guess planned fights where the guards would watch these things go down? Because I've heard a lot about that happening. You know, I've never seen it, but uh, I've heard about it. That was supposedly in Corcoran. That shit was going on. Uh, you know, when I got to Corcoran, the FBI was there investigating them over that stuff. Uh, you know, I know uh, I heard stories of, uh, you know, in the shoe. I did my shoe term in the early 80s before they built Corcoran. None of them, all the prisons were built while I was in there. But uh, they put this dude out on the yard. He was a gang member, a prison gang member, white dude. And uh, the shoe yards are very small, you know, they, it, they're real small. Uh, about as big as my living room, you know, really. Uh, yeah. It's big enough to play handball. And anyway, they put this white dude out on the yard with black gang members. And then and they had extra gunners there waiting because they knew as soon as you walked out there, it's going to be on and cracking, you know. And when it jumped off, they shot the white dude because, you know, they want, they didn't like him. They were doing shit like that. That's unbelievable, man. And, you know, and they, they also know, like in the shoe, they start at one section and go around. Uh, and it's like yard, yeah, you know. If you're going to go to the yard, they start on one side, start work. So if you're the first white dude in line and there's like five or six black dudes ahead of you, you're going to be the first one out on the yard with them. And as soon as you get out there, it's on. And the yeah. cops do that. And uh, that's how they worked it. Uh, well, you said that you were uh, in the whole biker scene, man. How How was that in the penitentiary? Was it? Uh, Cause I know from I know now most people they fall underneath you know that umbrella the brand Pecker Wood and all that stuff. I mean, is there like uh, I'm sure y'all had to if something were to jump off y'all would have to run with your own uh, groups of course. Yeah. But what what's yeah. the biker biker thing looking like in the penitentiary, man? I mean, do they have pretty much their own thing going on or what? Yeah, you know, dudes that are in a motorcycle scene, you know, the outlaw biker trip, uh, they kind of got their own little crews, you know, but I mean, they're white. If you're white, you're, you're still white. You run with the white dudes, but, you know, at, at, uh, obviously, you know, if there's four or five dudes that are in a motorcycle scene on the street, they're going to gravitate towards each other. Uh, you know, our thing is like to get out be on the street and ride motorcycles. And that's one thing that kept me going the whole time I was in there is, you know, I want to get out and be with my family, ride motorcycles and be free. Uh, when I went to the pen, uh, there were no skinheads, Nazi low rider thing. I mean, they had the brand and all that, but uh, 
So there were a lot of dudes that, that wanted to be in motorcycle clubs. You know, guys had long hair, they grow beards, be like, yeah, you know, they, and back then you could have your own clothes. So dudes would wear green rags or red rags, you know, like, hey, symbolizing what motorcycle club they kind of liked or wanted to be a part of. Uh, you know, now it's not like that. Because, like I say, there's not a lot of motorcycle guys in the pen. Uh, and now when I'm out, too, I see most guys riding Harley Davidsons and stuff. They're older cats, you know. Uh, yeah. But now in the pen, uh, you know, the guys are in the bike scene. There's not that many. Most, yeah. I guess they go to the feds now, most of them do. Is, but uh, yeah. still, well, though, if, if something jumped off on the yard where the white dudes had to be out there, even though you're a biker or whatever, you got to be out there. You got to go out there and do the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, look, I mean, I mean just because you're an outlaw motorcycle guy doesn't mean that you're not white. You're still in the pen. You're still part of, you know, you got to go out. I mean, I, I still associated with everybody. Even though I had, you know, dudes I gravitated to, dudes, uh, especially when I was young, them dudes taught me how to live in there, you know. I went in there as a teenager. These dudes have been in the pen, you know, five, ten years doing life terms. They're like, hey, how do you want to live? Because, you know, I did a shoot term. Uh, you know, I got a stabbing when I went to the reception center. And I did that shoot term. When I got out, I was kind of, I was still kind of wild. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, you know, prison was so fucking crazy, man. You know, you're paranoid. You know, them dudes, when I was on the main line for a while, like, hey, how do you want to live out here, you know? You want to yeah, fuck right. up and go back to the hole. You want to be comfortable, make money, you know. Well, let, let me ask this, man. Uh, they taught me how to do my time, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it goes for most people that just get in there. They find someone, gravitate to someone. They kind of teach them the ropes, and they learn by yeah. just going through the motion. But, uh, you know, as far as the whole uh, politics scene and who goes what, where, I don't really uh, want to ask you too much about that. I think you, 38 years in prison, you've probably seen some things, man. So was there anything that might stick out in your mind that you will always remember about the penitentiary, violence-wise or something along those lines? Oh, uh, you know, I, you know, like the dude, first dude I've seen get killed, man, uh, they used to subpoena guys around, you know. Like if they wanted Joe to go down to this prison and he's, a, say guys in San Quentin, they want him to go to Soledad or whatever. They would just find somebody with a case and subpoena him down there, right? So this guy got subpoenaed down to a prison from San Quentin, and, you know, he, he brought a kite with him. And uh, that kite was his hit. He gave the kite to these dudes, and uh, and they whacked him. I'm, uh, you know, he got stabbed in the neck, in the back, and uh, I remember looking up, dudes walking facing me and he had his hand on his neck, you know, and he had his, he had his arm raised up like to the tower, you know, the gun tower. And, uh, yeah, he just fell over, man. Before he hit the ground, dude, his head of thermal on a white thermal was just soaking, soaking with red with blood, you know? So he so, was laying there on the, on the ground face down. And, uh, you know, when the gunner seen it, cops run out there, all that shit. And, uh, they go roll the dude over and, and uh, you know, his hand went up like he was still trying to raise his hand. And he puked blood, you know, just like puked out blood. And uh, this cat next to me goes, hey, man, I bet you're bacon and eggs on Sunday. That guy's dead. I said, ain't no bad, you know. Yeah, that was a no first, bad. Bad. That's the first killing I've seen in there, you know. And, uh, I found out later, you know, that he had brought a kite down with his own hit. So the information on that kite was to whack him. Yeah. See, man, uh, you know, I would have read that damn kite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I heard you say shit about you know guys pooping shit and this and that. I mean, in paperwork, I seen dudes show up to prison with their paperwork. You know, first thing they do, they get in a cell, shit out their paperwork to show they're selling. You know, I mean, it's that's how it is now. Back in the day, I mean, people just knew you. You know, back in the day when I went to the pen, uh, you go into reception, right? 
uh, you got they take all your information, like you know where you're from, what your case is, how old you, all that shit. You know your religion. They had inmate clerks doing that. They had your file right there. They processed you into the prison. They were inmates, prisoners, right? So they knew what you were in prison for. So if some dude come in with a fucked up case, whatever, I mean, uh, it's not like that now. You know, cops do all that shit now. Or free staff. Inmates don't do that now. But that's how it was when I went to the pen, you know. Inmates did that shit. They took your photos, all that. You know, that's... that's that's a crazy story you just told, man. I can't even imagine a guy carrying a kite with his own death sentence on there, pretty much. Yeah, uh, man, you know. You said that was your first time seeing one. Was there other times where you seen men lose their lives? Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn. You know, like with the shotguns, man, like there were dudes that would fight in San Quentin, and they would shoot you with this. It was seven and a half grain birdshot, right? They would shoot you with. But they would just unload. I mean, they had one cop, he could shove around into the, the shotgun as he pulled it. He would just, just boom, 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 nonstop, you know. But uh, some of them pellets would ricochet up off the ground and hit dudes in the face, and a couple guys went blind over that shit. They lost their eyesight. So they did away with the shotguns, and they went to uh, H&K 9 millimeters, and they were using glazer rounds, you know. that. So when the round hits, it kind of explodes, you know. So uh, in New Folsom on Sea Yard, it was a black dude. Uh, I met some of his homeboys later, you know, and uh, he was swatting a bee at the table on the yard where they play cards and shit. You know, he was swatting at a bee. They shot that dude, man, and blew his arm off with a nine millimeter. They said he had a knife in his hand, but uh, he didn't. You know, they ran out there and found a matchbook cover all rolled up. They said, well, we thought this was a knife, you know. Those nine millimeters are deadly. Yeah, it's unbelievable, wow. man. I mean, uh, scary shit, you know, really. I mean, you can say, hey, I'm a tough guy, I'm a man, stand-up motherfucker, all that shit, but that shit's scary, man. 